Greetings, this is Jeff from Camtech Support, and today we're going to look at how to move EntraPass to a new computer. So, first of all, we're going to look at a setup that's already communicating. We've got a USB and an IP connection. Then we're going to take a look at uh, where to find the IP address of the gateway, and also how to change the IP address of the gateway. We're going to take a look also at backups, data and archive backups and then where to find the system serial number, and finally, how to restore the backups. Okay, so now let's start with our uh, setup that's already communicating. So, for the purpose of this demonstration, I will be using Entropass Global Edition version 6.03.42, but this applies to all versions of Entropass. All right, first thing we want to go check is the configuration of our connection. So we'll want to go to Devices Connections. We're going to start with the IP connection. Now you can see if we go to the IP device IP configuration tab that the MAC address is in there. We have used the following IP address. And now if we take a look at the USB connection, we can go to the RS-232 tab and we can see here that it's communicating on COM port 3. You'll want to make sure and match this up in the new software once the USB is installed on the new software. All right, so now let's take a look at operation site and connections. You can see that uh, both connections are communicating. The IP one says IP device communication OK and the other one loop communication OK. All right. So now, let's go check where to find the IP address of the gateway. So we will want to go to Devices, Gateway. You'll want to select your gateway. And then you want to go to the Default Public IP Address tab. This is where you specify the IP address of the machine that has the EntraPass installed on it. OK. So now, how to change the IP of the gateway. You'll probably want to do this prior to moving the software to the new machine. Once again, we go to Devices Gateway, and then we select our gateway, go to the default public IP address, and then we would change this to the IP address of the new machine. So in this case, let's say 192.168.1.200. And then go ahead and save. Now, when we do that, our IP communication is going to stop communicating, of course, because we've changed the IP address of the gateway. So you can see that the IP device communication now fails. Don't forget when you install the software on the new machine, you must be a local administrator on the machine and the firewall must be turned off. All right, so now. Let's take a look at the backups, data and archive backups. So to move the data to the new computer, we'll want to go to Options, Backup Scheduler. First of all, Data Backup. We'll leave it in the default folder and we'll make sure to check the checkbox that says Now and then click OK. For the archives backup, it's pretty similar. We'll want to go to Backup Scheduler again, but this time we'll want to go to the Archives tab. And once again, we can leave everything as is. We just want to make sure to check the checkbox that says now and click OK. We'll get an indicator that the backups are completed in desktops, desktop one. As you can see, the automatic ba backup data and archives are completed. All right, so now where to find the system serial number to install the software on the new machine? To find the system serial number, you'll want to go to Options, Registration. At the top there, where it says System Serial Number, the first four series of four digits, that's what you'll need to install the software. Of course, you wouldn't use the ones that are right here, but the ones in your software. When you're installing the software on the new machine, you'll want to make sure that the versions are compatible with the operating system. Now lastly, once the software is installed on a new machine, how to restore the backups. 
Now, first of all, where are the backups located? They're under C, Program Files, or Program Files x86, Cantac, and then Server underscore GE, because I'm using Global Edition, and then in the Backup folder. You can see our archives and data backup. The data backup starts with the letter D as in Donald, and the archive backup starts with the letter A as in Apple. Now, in the new software, we'll want to go through the server to restore our backups. So we'll want to go to the backup tab. First of all, we will restore the data. So by default, it goes back to our C program files, Cantac, server underscore GE, or CE if you were using corporate edition. Now, if we select our backup starting with the letter D, you can see that the OK button lights up. So we click the OK button to start restoring the data. All right, so our restore was done successfully. Now, let's restore the archives. So, still in backups, we select Restore Archives. Now, if we try and double-click on that D backup again, you see that the OK button doesn't light up. We've got to select an archive folder. We double-click on the A folder, and now the OK button lights up. And now our archives were restored successfully. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.